What's this knob do? No one had to properly atone for anything back then. What is up, everybody? Thank you very much for joining us again here. This is episode two of our Hammer Tutorials, The and Basics. Uh, pretty much what this is going to be is this episode is our world building episode. This is showing you how to put the floors down, how to put the walls up, how to put the ceiling over, and how to get a room set up. So that's what we're going to start with here. We're going to start our map off with a room. So if you're following along with me, we'll start with a room. Um, eventually, later on in the tutorials throughout the episodes, we're going to use the same exact map. But we're going to go from a room to the outside, maybe to another room, uh, get a couple of stories going here. So that way we can show you exactly how everything works in Hammer and how we use everything here. So in the last episode, I explained uh, some of the tools on our left side here, our texture tool as well. Now the tools on our left side that we're going to be using the most are going to be our select tool, our camera tool, our block tool, our texture toggle tool, and our whole texture block tool. Or what is this called? I think it's called toggle or apply hole application. I don't know. Whatever this block is that looks like a whole complete brick instead of the colored bricks, we're going to be using that block tool. And we might be getting into the clipping block. Um, the clipping block is very simple, very easy, and it's very effective for making corners and 45 degree angles or angles that you can't create two dimensionally here because this is only giving you squares. However, let's get started. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to go over to our block tool here. We're going to select that. For those of you that like hotkeys, you can hit Shift B. That's going to automatically select the block tool here. Um, you'll notice in these three dim or these two dimensional grids or these two dimensional views that they are all gridded out. Um, the grids, depending on how far you zoom out, do get bigger and smaller. That does not mean that the grids are actually getting bigger and smaller in units. To change the units of the grid, you'll notice on your bottom right, it says snap on grid 64. Um, if it doesn't say 64, it might say 32, 16, 128. It's going to be a multiple of two. So to change that 64, what you can do is hit either the left bracket on your keyboard or the right bracket. And that's the keys located next to the letter P. Now, if you hit the left bracket, as you'll notice on screen, it'll go, uh, let me see, let me zoom in a little bit more. The more I hit the left bracket, the smaller the grid gets. The more I hit the right bracket, the bigger the, the grid gets. Um, so for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to start the grid off at 32. We'll zoom all the way out and find the dead center middle, um, which is these two blue lines that intersect. It might be relatively difficult to, to see on video and recording, but in Hammer, you'll notice two blue lines that are intersecting. We'll get all of our camera views here, and what the two blue lines are, uh, in game and coordinate speak, is zero, zero, zero. We'll go over to our browse for our texture area, and in the filter down at the bottom, we will type in no draw. Make sure on the right side, all of these boxes are checked, so they all have check marks in them. But once no draw shows up, we're going to go ahead and select no draw. What no draw does is it does not, uh, does not draw a, a texture. So it's pretty much an invisible wall, the most hated thing from players. What we're going to do is we're going to create a box 512 by 512. How we do that is we drag and drop. So we left click on one portion of the grid, hold it all the way to another portion of the grid, and let go. Once we do that, you'll see this square. In the top view, that's where I like to start it. In the side front views, you can change the width of the floor. This is going to be our floor, we'll say. You can change the width of this. I'll go ahead and keep it at 32 meters. So bam. Now if you go over to your three-dimensional view, hit Z. You can scroll in and out, you know, move around with the W, A, S, and D keys. You'll see that we have a block here. To copy and paste this is this, uh, no, we're not going to do that yet. We're going to make the walls. So we'll go back to our block tool. And we'll just drag and drop one wall unit here, 32. Make sure in this that you don't have them overlapping. Um, I see a lot of maps where things are overlapping and things, they, they just don't look clean. And, it, and, and honestly, it's not very good for the game itself because it has to render both of those faces colliding together and what both of those textures look like meshed together. 
So it's not healthy. So make sure that you always have, you know, pieces connecting instead of going through each other because that's going to cause a lot of issues. However, we'll make this wall here. Um, a generic wall height is 128. Um, an easy way to figure that out is if you go into the texture application tool and type in dev, scroll all the way down until you find dev measure wall 01B or 01A, it'll actually tell you in the upper right hand corner or left hand corner of this area that uh, wall 128 by 128. So walls are, are generally 128 units by 128 units in game at least in comparison to real life. However, we'll go back to that no draw tool. We're going to select this wall here. Once you select uh, a, a brush that you've already made and then go to create a new brush, that brush is going to copy most of the same components or most of the same attributes as the previous brush. So as you can see, it's still flush with the floor and it's not overlapping anything. It's just as tall as the previous brush here. And we'll do this all the way around. Get a whole stream of sides here. All right, now for the copy and paste thing. So what I like to do for ceilings or most of the time what I like to do for ceilings just to get an exact replica of it is I like to select the floor with the select tool or shift S select the floor hold the shift button and left click your mouse on the object you would like to copy and paste in our case this is the floor while still holding the shift and mouse uh, move it up and then let go of the mouse key while still holding shift and then let go of shift that copies it now obviously once you get quicker at this you can you know really quickly just oh I'm not even <laughs> I was holding the caps lock. You can really quickly copy and paste things. Um, there's my little Oreo sandwich. And to delete something that you had just created or to undo an action that you had just done, you can click Control Z. That is the fastest way to undo an action. If not, you can go up here to where it says undo and redo. Uh, you can undo and redo your actions as well. However, now that we have a nice little solitary room here with the ceiling flush and the floor flush with the walls, Everything looks good in our little editor menu here. We're going to go to our texture browser. This one, we're going to just start with the dev textures here because that's what I really like. I mean, orange and gray is just a fantastic color combination. So we'll, we'll find dev slash dev underscore measure generic 01B. We'll find that here. Now we're going to use our texture application toggle tool or shift A. So we're going to go ahead and select that or hit shift A. You'll notice there's a bunch of tools here, X, Y, X, Y for the texture shift, texture scale. There's a displacement thing. There's a rotation thing. I will post a video going into a super detailed explanation on this entire tool here. Um, but for right now, on this video purposes, you'll notice that the mode here says lift, select, lift, select, apply texture only, apply texture values, and align to view. These are all different things that you can do with your textures. Obviously, you can play with this in game to get a, a better view for right now. But what we're going to do is we're just going to have it on lift select. Make sure we've got that generic 01B selected. Go to our floor and right click the floor and right click this ceiling. So if you right click uh, any of these objects where you have lift select selected, it's going to apply that texture to whatever you right click it to. Now we're going to color the walls orange. So we'll go to our texture browser, go right next to it, find 01 for the measure generic. Oop messed up there right click <laughs> ba bam now we have a room so now that we have our very first room here we're going to go ahead and save the map so we'll go to save uh, let's see oh my things back in the bin so if your thing does go back to the bin um, an easy way is just a backspace up a uh, two folders and then go to source SDK content DOD um, for the purpose of this, I'm going to keep mine in Tutorial Maps RC, but you would usually have yours in Maps RC. And we're going to name this Tutorial Map Episodic. I already have a Tutorial Map Episodic. I didn't make anything with it, but we'll just save it over that. So we'll save that. And this map is technically a room. You can pretty much put a couple of people in it, run it right now, and it's officially a map. So go ahead and stick around for the next segment of this tutorial, where we're going to be adding spawn zones lighting, um, possibly a couple of props, and a ramp with a higher location on it, a doorway, 
and a couple of other modifications to the map here. So the next portion of this series is going to be pretty much adding your spawn zones, lighting, and an outside portion. Uh, stay tuned, and if you enjoyed any part of this tutorial, if it was helpful at all, go ahead, drop a like, a subscribe, give us some love, because we don't want to cry anymore when we sleep. And this is Opti, Opti out.